The generals were added in the October 2022 update, and since then they've been updated with more new stuff. There are still many questions in players about them. I will now try to explain everything. Before we get started, I'm starting a giveaway. Ten players can win three Beatrice offerings. To enter, watch the video and count how many of these shards you've seen appear. This will also count. Don't forget to write down your player name and server you play on. First, let's quickly look at how you can get a general. To get your first general, you need to reach player level 10. After that, the game will show you where to find the generals in and how to use the generals. You get Horatio by default. You can also skip the tutorial part, which is useful if you are in Outer Realms. Let's look at what is needed for upgrading. There are three rarities in the game, Rare, Epic, and Legendary. The rarer the Gene Rawl, the more things you need to upgrade. There are Offerings, from which you can get General's Shards, XP Boost, and Skill Reset Tokens. You get few offerings sometimes for free, except the Sasaki Offerings. Sasaki Offerings are currently only available during the seasonal event. You can buy them from bundles or for rubies. The other offering types can be obtained from Events, Wheel of Affluence, and the Master Blacksmith. Sometimes there are good offers for rubies that are worth buying and include offerings. Skill Reset Tokens can be used to reset skills, useful when you need to change a general from attack to defense, or vice versa. You can use General Shards to upgrade a General's Star level to level 10 by default, and then you can upgrade 10 levels per star up to 100, which is the maximum level they can have at the time the video is made. And you can increase levels in two ways. You can attack with that general and get XP from the first 20 attacks every day. Another method is XP boosters. These are the easiest way to upgrade. There are six types of XP boosters in the game. Here you can see how much XP they give you. At higher levels, you can also buy from Siats in the Blacksmith. Currently, there are five generals in the game. Leo and Alyssa are rare. Horatio is epic, Toril and Sasaki are legendary. There are also three announced generals who will be released later. Before I talk about the skills, it is important to know that after a certain amount of points, you can only unlock a new row of skills. There are skills that cost more than one point, so you can't unlock all of them. So it's important how you allocate your points. For each general, I show the special skills and what I think is the best point allocation. We'll also look at whether the general is better at attacking or defending. Let's start with the basic skills that all generals could have. There are the attacking ones, which increase the number of yard, flank, or front, or yard, flank, and front strength. There are the defensive ones, which increase the yard and wall size, or they give yard, front, and flank strength. The rarer a general, the more effective these abilities are, linked to the table with the exact data in the description. Each general's last row also contains an extra attack wave. The first ability removes 40% of the effects that reduce the power of ranged units in every second wave, for example the shields or slits. The second ability increases the soldier's strength by 10% every second wave. The third, in every second wave, sets the strength to 140% if it is less than that, and adds an additional 10%. The fourth reduces wall-reducing effects by 30%, such as siege towers or murder holes. The fifth kills 7% of all the enemy soldiers on the flanks and front before the first wave. The sixth removes the effects of the opponent's general until the second wave. Overall, I recommend using it for defending. It was the most effective in this point allocation. The first ability in every third wave, for every 100 units killed up to that point, adds 1% strength on the wall. The second ability increases the soldier's strength by 10% every second wave. The third increases the yard strength by 0.7%, for every 100 units killed on the wall, up to 
The fourth adds pirate soldiers to the yard based on wall combat, up to 2,500. The sixth increases the resource from NPCs to attack by 25% and the looting capacity of soldiers by 15%. In defense, it reduces the number of resources lost by 25%. The seventh in every second wave gives strength based on the loot capacity of the soldiers. Overall, I recommend using Alyssa for attacking, especially against weak NPC targets. The first ability increases the soldier's strength by 10% every second wave. The second reduces the enemy's ranged combat strength by 14% in every third wave. The third, in defense, increases the defender's strength on the flanks based on the amount of units. The fourth ability in every third wave, for every 100 units killed up to that point, adds 1% strength on the wall. The fifth in every second wave gives strength based on the difference between the number of strength in the attackers and defenders. The sixth one increases the strength every second wave by 40% in attack and 62% in defense, based on the number of units lost in the previous wave. The seventh in defense increases the wall capacity by 21%. The eighth in every second wave increases the strength by 9% of the yard strength and increases the strength during yard battle. Horatio is basically a defensive general. I use him with this point allocation. The first ability in every second wave reduces the enemy strength based on the combat strength difference. The second one in every third wave kills 32% of attacking melee attackers on defense and 2.5% of defending melee defenders on attack on the wall. The third in every third wave increases the combat strength of the soldiers based on the remaining defending and attacking soldiers. The fourth increases the yard strength by 0.7%. For every 100 units, kill it on the wall, up to 30%. The fifth in every second wave reduces the opponent's ranged combat strength by 50%, and melee combat power by 25%. The sixth in every three waves reduces the opponent's combat power by 25% for two waves. The seventh in attack increases the soldier's combat strength by 1.6%, and in defense by 2% in yard based on the number of units lost on the wall fight. The eighth in every two waves reduces the opponent's ranged combat power by 21% and increases your combat strength by 2.1%. Toril is the best general to attack in most cases, but can also be used to defend against player and con in the following ways. The first ability increases the strength by 4% in each wave. It stacks up to any amount. The second ability increases the soldier's strength by 10% every second wave. The third one increases the melee combat strength by 100% if the enemy's melee combat strength is higher than the ranged combat strength. The fourth in every three waves reduces the opponent's combat strength by 25% for two waves. The fifth in attack reduces the combat strength of all odd waves by 60% and increases the combat strength of all even waves by 60%. The seventh reduces the opponent's general's effects by 20%, which affect the soldiers. The eighth increases the soldier's combat strength by 50% if the current wave is the same as the previous one. The ninth ability in every third wave, for every 100 units killed up to that point, adds 1% strength on the wall. Sasaki is good in attack and defense, too. Unfortunately for me, she is only level 30, so I don't know how it's worth scoring. Thanks if you watched. Have a nice day.